Inter-American Institute for Global Change and Research, where you serve as a science director, uh, shares the mission that the Global Council for Science and the Environment has, which is to improve the scientific basis of environmental decision making. And when I say, you know, the role of science in decision making to ensure that decision making is deliberative and informed and durable, um, in service to the environment, people always nod their heads and they're really excited about our mission. And then when you actually start to talk about it in practice, the room gets really quiet. In the context of your work, how do you tell people about the work that you do? What examples do you use? From my perspective, I'm at an intergovernmental organization. And so we serve the countries, the governments, who are our member states. And so that's, I think, our starting point. You know, How can we best serve these countries who came together, signed an agreement, and, and agreed to work together and fund the organizations? But there is this huge gap that remains that you mentioned. Today, more than ever at the IAI, we uh, put a total focus on transdisciplinary research approaches. And so that how, to me, is critical. So it's not about this scientists pushing the science towards the decision makers, but rather how do we create a community of practice, uh, teams that come together, scientists from natural sciences, social sciences, uh, experts from humanities with those who are, would actually take and use the science, the policy practitioners, it could be someone in the private sector, and together in those teams, jointly coming up with solutions. You know, so one example right now um, is work that we're beginning to do, just very beginning to do on the sargassum especially in the Caribbean region. Over the last number of months, we've been working with development banks to identify channels of funding and are at the beginning stages of developing a project that would involve multiple countries around the Caribbean region to identify really practical uh, strategies and solutions to address the challenges of sargassum, which have a huge impact, especially on tourist, tourism based economies, um, but also other impacts on fisheries and human health. Another example is a project that's currently being implemented in more in the southern corner of South America. Teams that had worked there previously identified a huge gap in drought policies, that there were no effective drought policies or plans in place. Perhaps the basic science to support that was there, but that next leap hadn't been made. And so currently uh, the group is rolling out a project, a multi-year project with funding from from the EU to develop drought monitoring and forecasting systems and linking that directly to the governments who would use the information to inform their responses and bring that information, for example, to the agricultural sector. I wonder, given the multilateral focus of the IAI and your work, from your experience, what you think about science diplomacy as a practice and as a discipline? No, Michelle, that's a fantastic question. And science diplomacy has come to the forefront of a lot of our work. And we're actually in the process of standing up a center for science diplomacy for Latin America and the Caribbean. So it's a hugely important area. And how do you compel people to recognize that we're part of a global, global planet, recognize that any child who is suffering is the same as my child who is suffering. And from a more pragmatic perspective, bringing you know, people through social media, engaging, bringing people's stories, the humanity, so that we can feel it and see it and recognize that we are the same.